My name is Amy Lillard, and I am the Executive Director of WhipSmart. I'm really excited to introduce you today to Erin Joy Nash. She's here to talk with us today about the Brave Space Project and their film Expedition Reclamation. Um, we're really excited to get her insight today on her experiences using the Seed and Spark funding platform. Uh, this discussion is part of WhipSmart's ongoing series uh, to talk about monetization platforms for creatives and how you can use them. You can check out more about monetization platforms on our website, which is bewhipsmart.org. So check that out. But right now, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Erin. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just jump in. Hey, Erin, how are you? Great. Good to, uh, glad to be here. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly where, where are you today? Where do you I'm live? In, I'm in Leavenworth, Washington. So I live on the Pascuosa Wenatchee homelands uh, here in the Wenatchee Valley uh, in eastern Washington. Nice. Well, we're very glad that you're here and we're very glad about the Zoom platform at this point. So, well, let's just start by you telling us a little bit about the Brave Space Project and the film that you, you have been working on. Uh, basically, our film is, it's about, uh, the length is still <laughs> being decided. It's going to be 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, we've got 12 characters. So it's a bit of an interweaving of all of these characters talking about uh, what it means to belong in the outdoors um, and reclaiming belonging for Black, Indigenous, and women of color in outdoor spaces, in outdoor recreation. Um, about a year and a half ago now, my co-director Chelsea Murphy and I um, got together. Uh, we both kind of were doing activism in our own realms. Um, she's a, a Black mother who is trying to create more representation for black moms in the outdoor spaces and be a representation of black women in outdoor adventures. And um, I was doing, I had just done a film at the time about women in the outdoors. And so we connected and started talking about doing a film together. Um, and so she is a bit of a uh, Instagram influencer and she's got a big platform. She ended up putting out a call for characters on her Instagram platform saying, you know, any Black Indigenous of or women of color who wants to be involved with storytelling and in a film project, um, we want to do something, so let your voice be heard. And we had over 55 responses of women who wanted to be both in front of the camera telling their stories and then also behind the camera um, telling those stories. And so it very quickly became apparent that it was going to be more of a community um, and that the film was going to be a byproduct of that community. And so for about a year, um, we ended up uh, created, creating online spaces for women to meet online, to talk about, you know, barriers to the outdoors, what an outdoors would look like that they want to be a part of as a BIWOC, Black, Indigenous, or woman of color. Um, and then out of those conversations, uh, we developed questions for our documentary of what we were going to talk about and ended up connecting with 12 of the women who lived in Washington state and going out and filming with each of them. I mean, one of the things that I love that you just said is that your documentary is rooted in community and that you pulled voices from not only Washington state, but all over to make this project. That's so incredible. But once you had all those stories, you of course need money to make movie right and so i know that you were very engaged with um the seed and spark platform um can you tell us a little bit about why you chose that platform yeah so we looked at a couple different platforms um and uh essentially we liked the interface i think um we really liked how everything was able to be displayed you've got your um, you know, your trailer or your pitch video there. And then it really gives a lot of space to talk about your story and introduce your team. Um, we liked that, you know, there's some platforms out there that require you to raise 100% of the funds to even get the funds. Um, and then there's some, you know, like GoFundMe where it's, you just get what you get and there's no pressure. We kind of like that this was a little bit in between. You have to reach 80% of your goal to get the funds. Um, and then a big factor for us was the education that came with the Seed and Spark platform. So they 
provide a whole video tutorial about crowdfunding, a crowdfunding handbook, um, tools for creating a campaign calendar. They gave uh, spreadsheet templates. Um, and then one of the big things too was uh, they have a crowdfunding expert who once you have um, your platform set and all your verbiage and your pitch video, you submit it and then they give you feedback. And uh, initially we thought that feedback was going to be more in person. And so that that was a big reason that we did it was we get to talk to this person. Um, it ended up being a little bit more, it was just like emailing back and forth. And it was a little bit more of like canned responses than we had hoped for, but it was still helpful. Um, they just provide a lot of tools to set you up for success and give you, um, you know, algorithms for deciding how much money to even have be your goal, um, how much to set your, your um, contribution levels at, lots of information, great education. So essentially that is why we chose it. Well, and we're going to talk a little bit later about, you know, setting setting markers within the campaign, but I want to visit with you about this idea, and I hear this a lot when talking to people who are raising money, which is how much work it takes to do these campaigns and like what you were, you know, what you, what, tell me about that and like how much was work was it and like how did you manage the workflow? Yeah, it's a lot of work <laughs> and we knew that and they tell you that. I don't think you realize it until you're in it. Uh, other filmmakers had told me that. Um, I would say, you know, it was about double the work that we thought it might be. It just takes a lot of time to continually update supporters, thank people, send incentives, you know, plan events, do social media uh, campaigns, and then uh, manage relationships with press partners as well, if you're doing any sort of blogs or anything, which I highly recommend. So, it was a lot of work. Um, the way that we ended up managing it, so we have a core team of about four of us who are kind of the leadership team on this film, um, directors and producers, and we were all in the fundraising together. Um, and then all the, the characters also helped out. So we had about 18 of us that were essentially tapping into their you know, friends and family lists and helping in some ways, whether that was writing a blog or helping with an Instagram live on their platform. Um, so the people power, I think it, I mean, this whole thing comes back to community. I think that that's one of the reasons that we were very successful and that goes for our team. We had a lot of people. Um, and then I actually took on the role as a project manager and um, it just kind of turned out that I had the time, um, you know, as a freelancer, I, I had the time. Um, other people on our team either were in school, had have kids, had other projects going on. So having a project manager is something that I think I would highly recommend. That helped a lot. So I am a spreadsheet person. I had a lot of spreadsheets. We had a calendar. Uh, we did a lot of pre-planning. They suggest taking, I think, eight weeks is what they suggest of of doing pre-planning for before you even launched your campaign. Uh, we ended up not having that much time. I think we did it in like four to six weeks. And so it was kind of a crunch, but um, essentially having a project manager and then dividing up roles, I think is how we managed a lot of that. We ended up having uh, a gal come on specifically as our social media manager, because we knew that for us, a lot of our audience was on Instagram um, because Chelsea had her big platform. We had some other press partners where a lot of what we were going to do be doing was social media. So we had someone designated to help create content for each week, each day um, to divide up those roles. But even still, I mean, I think that was a full time job for me, you know, 40 hours a week for pre planning through the campaign. Um, and that might not be the same for everyone. Our campaign was really big. Um, it was big, you know, we had a bigger goal than Seed and Spark even recommended us having. So, you know, I'm curious, now I wanna dig into that. It's, it's interesting to hear you say it's 40 hours a week, like the full-time job, but like, can you just hint at some of the things that you were doing on a daily basis? Like if you're going to be a project manager and you're gonna take on that role, 
what, give me some highlights of what you would do each week that was on your to-do list. Yeah. Um, I mean, anything from thanking every single supporter, sending out incentives. Um, we had blogs, podcasts, um, either written by our characters or by press partners that we were sending out content to the week's prior, we created a lot of content up front. We essentially had a press kit of photos, write-ups about the projects, write-ups about who we were, what our goals were. We had email templates for partners so that it was really easy for them to share. Like they didn't even have to think much about it other than just copying and pasting and making it a little bit of their own language. So creating all of that, um, uh, managing the creation of all the social media stuff, you know, like that was, that was a lot. Um, yeah, managing, uh, campaign partner relationships, you know, making sure things are being published at the time they said they were being published or that everyone has everything they need. Um, we had a couple online events like matching, uh, matching events. And so, even just planning an online event. I mean, that's a job in and of itself. We had a raffle, we had, <laughs> um, you know, in, inviting people, making sure people were gonna show up. Um, yeah, so on a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of emailing, a lot of making sure that everyone is doing what they said they were going to do, um, that pledges are happening, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of communicating uh, within the team and then with our partners and supporters. That is very helpful. Thank you for sharing some of that, you know, nitty gritty. I think it's helpful. Um, you know, I talk to a lot of filmmakers in these spaces and they say, they talk a lot about what they did wrong, but can you talk about what you guys did right? What your team did right? Um, and what you put, cause you, are, you were so successful in this campaign. So how do you, what do you highlight as your success? Yeah. I think our success was building community before we even started the campaign. Um, I think that there is some community building that you can do during the campaign, but if you don't have it before you start, there's, there's not people to be a part of it. So I think that that was essential. I mean, we had been, like I said, we had been meeting with this group of about 55 women for almost a year before we even started um, it was a full year before we started crowdfunding. And so, and then also, you know, Chelsea through her partnerships with outdoor brands, she has really great relationships and she's just a great community builder herself. And so I think that we really also knew who our audience was. Our audience was the outdoor community and all of us personally are very tapped into outdoor whatever we're doing, backpacking, you know, some of us mountain bike, we're very plugged into those communities. And so then when we start, when, when we pressed go on that campaign, you know, we had a couple people that we joked that they were just a part of our team. You know, they were supporters on the sidelines, but they would always be rooting us on, on social media or sending us emails. You reached this goal, you did this. And so doing those updates, um, I think was really important for us. Um, so yeah, knowing your audience and building that community before you even start. And something that Seed and Spark does recommend is asking for pledges before you press go on your campaign. And that helped us a lot to just get a feel of the pulse of how is this going to go? Like, are people willing to share this with their networks? Are, are people, you know, excited about this and want to support this? Um, so that was a really helpful tip from them. And because we already kind of had the community building and our audience dialed in, it all just, it, it ended up being super successful because of that, I think. Let's, um, Aaron, let's jump into a very popular conversation when it comes to, um, funding platforms, which is pricing levels and incentives. Um, what advice would you give to filmmakers who are trying to figure that out for their project? Yeah. Uh, so in terms of the pricing levels for pledges, you want to provide something that is, you know, low enough that um, even if someone doesn't have a lot of finances, they feel like they can still contribute and, um, and then kind of just figure out like the different tiers from there of 
you know, having, having enough lower tier points where people who might not have as much finances still feel like they're involved. And then some higher tiers that are kind of asking people to stretch a little bit to meet that. And Seed and Spark actually was really helpful in helping come up with those two. They have guidelines of what they suggest. I think initially we had our lowest tier at $15 and they even suggested that we go lower. I think they suggested a $10 um, uh, mark. And that actually ended up being really helpful because some people, I think we got, we got donations from $5 to $1,000. Um, and so having a lower point where people don't feel bad about it and they feel like they're still a part of that story. So specifically about this platform, right? What is it, what do filmmakers, like what is the thing that you would say to, that filmmakers need to know to make the most out of the platform, the CD Spark platform? I mean, I, I think that to utilize this platform the best and how it's intended, it goes back to creating community and having that before you step into the crowdfunding, because I think that it is a really good, uh, it's, it's a really good connecting tool. Um, you know, there, you can actually go on there and find other communities that are doing similar work to you or work that you're interested in. And so using it as kind of a connection platform, but before doing that, you need to kind of like bring your audience there, like already have an audience. And then um, it works really beautifully because there, like I was saying, there are a lot of spaces to write about you and your mission and why you're doing this film, why you're doing this work. Um, but to, to, to even have anyone read that, you kind of have, a, have to have a community first to come and be interested in that, so. So how do people, you know, how do people keep up with what you're doing and follow your journey? Like, how do we find you? Yeah, so our website, um, bravespaceproject.org. And then we also have an Instagram. So we're bravespace underscore media. Um, you can follow us on there. You can sign up for our email list on our website to get updates of when the film's coming out. Um, you know, with the 12 characters that we have, all of the women are Washington based and they're all doing their own really cool things. They're involved in all sorts of activism and outdoor communities. We've got podcast producers, we've got photographers and other filmmakers and writers and all of their info and you know those movements um, eventually are also going to be on our website we're going to have a list of resources so that you can connect with all of them um yeah uh she colors nature on instagram is chelsea murphy my co-director she does a lot of things so all of those spaces are good good spots to connect with us and just come on this journey as we finish this film excellent well aaron Thank you so much for sharing, you know, your wisdom about Seed and Spark, of course, but also, you know, the joy of the projects that you're working on. And please keep us posted about what's happening. And thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thank you so much.